In this episode, we will show you the start of our Atlantic Ocean crossing. A journey which will end in Cabo Verde or in Suriname. Seamless. But first, this is me, Kim. There is Bart. And here is Liz, our little explorer. We sold everything to explore these beautiful places with our tiny 33 foot sailboat, Tranquility. Last week, we prepared Tranquility for her upcoming heavy and exhausting voyage, the Atlantic Ocean. We did a one day sail to Tenerife and explored the island. We will leave Tenerife from the harbour of San Miguel. Only one thing to do, fill up our 220 litre water tanks. And then it's time to go. Finally, there we go, we are leaving on our way to Suriname. Weather window is not perfect, but we think we're gonna make it to Cape Verde. Uh, if we have enough diesel, we'll go and continue. If not, we'll fill up. We know there's going to be a no wind zone and we will have to use our engine for at least three days. We think we can use the engine for 4.7 days. This is why Cape Verde could be a stopover. school package. Uh, she's turning three in February and we enrolled her to a Dutch school who uh, that's a school for children uh, on uh, cargo ships, inland cargo sh ships and sailors are also uh, allowed to enroll if they stay abroad uh, for a longer period of time. And we just got this package with her education stuff and um, yeah we let Liz see what she's got and um, play a little bit we are not starting yet but just to show her what's in there what have you there Liz? behind the cliff wow our huh? first crossing meal <laughs> mm -hmm. 
little bit salty. First night, evening actually, 11 knots, 4.8. One boat keeps us company. Mm. Sorry. So, first uh, night shift of our big trip. And uh, this is what you see behind me is the morning light. Um, it was a very good night. Uh, much better than we had before. We could sail all the way. Um, the wind picked up to 40 knots and with the wind angle of beam reach we were doing five and a half six knots the entire night so that's good and I managed to get some sleep in the first half of the night and Kim is asleep as well uh, Liz was perfect and she just woke up uh, it's now uh, 7 15 so that's uh, it's okay. Let's see what the second day will bring us. It's the day after the first night. The first night went really well. I think for the first time we feel quite alright. Of course a little bit tired but not seasicky thing so and the weather is quite nice so easy to cook or easy so okay to cook so I decided to make some vegetable soup today and maybe for tomorrow So my second night and um, I'm really impressed by the brightness of the moon during the night. Uh, we haven't had that in earlier passages so yeah I really like it. The fact that you can see so much during the night is priceless. So I'm actually enjoying this shift and I feel quite awake even though this afternoon I was really really tired I now feel good what just happened we flew the drone <laughs> uh, no worries <laughs> we got it <sighs> we have just hoisted parasailer and uh, we want to shoot some uh, very nice uh, footage and um, as I turned in to land and for Kim to catch, suddenly probably my thumb was resting on the home button, go home, return to home button. 
So I was almost there and then did it and the drone flew away to go to his returning point which is on the water out there. I can cancel it but then my heart starts beating a lot <laughs> and I'm shaking like hell so it was very uh, hard to get the drone back to Kim but well, I think a minor injury for Kim. She broke a nail I guess. No, nothing. No, nothing. It hit my it. finger. <gasps> It hit my finger, but, the but it's okay. Is awesome, you're gonna see it. We had two days of good sailing and made good progress, but no marine life so far, even though we scouted the ocean. Waar is het mooi? Ja. Ah. I think we have a tiger shark on board. the wind died down which was uh, predicted and uh, now we're in it so we're gonna pull down the parasailer and start the engine I hope it's gonna be one day and then uh, the wind will be back so night number three we uh, we started our engine at around four o'clock because the wind died and uh, we took away our parasailer. Um, but in the night, uh, Kim felt some wind. Uh, she didn't want to ma wake me just to hoist the sails and everything. Uh, so she just waited while 
one hour and uh, then it was my shift so we put up the mainsail uh, so we shut off the engine and now we're going five and a half knots again so that's fine that's great we thought we had to motor the entire night as well so this is uh, this is perfect and we have a, a very clear clear sky uh, moonlight the moon is bright we had some dolphins around the bow so that's pretty nice but it's in the middle of the night so i'm not gonna stand up the, on the bow and, uh, and have a look yeah we feel fine we are we are doing great actually the trip has been uh, good to us so far we're still going south um, and the uh, plan is to catch up some wind next to africa again um, we're ahead of schedule so I think we'll be fine, we'll catch the wind and then we can go uh, to the west, we're heading to Suriname. And hopefully with enough diesel so we won't have to make a stop over on Cabo Verde. So good morning, um, temperature are rising, so um, my night shifts are... Uh, quite easy because I can uh, be outside because the temperature is uh, quite okay and um, what I'm doing is I try to do a uh, 20 minute sleep cycle every time uh, so I still get some sleep during the night as well and it's possible because I make myself a nice cozy corner and I'll just lay there with some blankets because I mean it's still it's, it's on the ocean and it's uh, 26 degrees outside uh, during the day but at night it's, uh, it still feels a little bit cold and this is only possible because the uh, ocean is so mild to us I don't think it's, uh, it will be possible in a few days I think I'm going to have to thank uh, Neville uh, who we met in Las Palmas. He made my uh, fishing gear in order and uh, we threw the line overboard and like in half an hour we got a fish on the hook. Now we're gonna see if it's uh, good enough to eat. That's a nice size. No, I think that's a decent amount of Skipjack tuna. It's got to be in a pasta. So the entire challenge is, uh, do we have enough diesel to uh, go to Suriname? We are not so worried if we are uh, past Cabo Verde because then the trade winds will kick in and that's fine and they're always constant um, but over here we they should be constant but there's a lot of difference now because of uh, a couple of low pressure zones um, so we motored already for 40 hours I guess and I think we're doing fine we uh, motored at 1100 1300 rpm and our engine does one and a half liter to an hour when on 1600 rpm or so or maybe 1800 rpm we're not really sure so um, I think we're uh, using a lot less than one and a half liters but let's have a look at the tank capacity now bear in mind this is not full because our tank is not square but I think we used uh, half of our capacity now so 40 liters gone and that means we still have 130 so that's good
calm, fill up your diesel tank. Don't wait. Finally, I was waiting all day on the wind and now it, it's there, it's there. You were waiting, I was waiting for the rain. No, for the wind. Sailing again. No more engine noise. But what we found out about the engine, we thought we would run one and a half liter uh, an hour, but it's more like one liter point oh five one hour. So that means we can motor instead of 4.7 days, 7.6 days. Bam! Dodging rain clouds here. Everything backfired this night. An exploding pepper. So the boat is really smelly. And thunderstorm coming towards well, us. Well, this was it. If you have any questions, please let us know. And for now, goodbye. And thank you very much for watching. Fair winds to you all. Just the three of us on the big blue for 26 days.